Hi guys, here is Ivan and today I have a very interesting video prepared for you. I'm gonna be demonstrating how I did this tattoo without using any black color in it. And that of course would be a lie because I use a pure black in one place but that was meant to be black. So before you click away from the tutorial, give me a chance to explain you what I mean. I will tell you why I didn't mix any of the colors with the black and what I choose to do in order to achieve the contrast. I will also telling you some of my favorite color combinations to achieve a nice and realistic skin tones and also my thought process while I'm working. So this will be actually a bit longer episode but I promise you everyone will take something out of it. Anyhow, if I already managed to get your attention, let's start. Just before we start, I will steal one more minute of your precious time to thank everybody from my Patreon. I am blessed to have such a big support and this makes me really proud and happy. However, if you want to join us, there we have a private community of tattoo artists all over the world connecting and helping each other to grow. There I am also posting once in a month a real-time video like 3-4 hours black and grey or color tattoo. I am posting it also with my color palette next to it and also I am sharing what are exactly my colors and how I mix them together. So it is much easier for you to follow my tips and how actually I apply them in practice. My Patreon is still pretty new as I am building it from scratch so if you decide to join please try to be a positive and patient cause I am actually trying to help you. However, it's just $4 for the lowest tier where you have all that that I mentioned already included and it can be cancelled anytime. So it is risk free for you, if you think this might be something interesting, I would love to see you there. Of course there are some other triggers which are a little bit more expensive, take a look at everything and see what matches the best for you. Anyhow, I will let all the infos in the description below in this video, so if you're interested make sure you check it out. And now, let's finally start the today's episode and we're gonna do it with what I'm using as an equipment. My machine as always is my Stigma Rotary Spear. This is also the brand that I'm currently sponsored by and I like their products a lot. The needles what I'm using today are almost the same what I'm using 90% of my realistic tattoos. I have 5 round liner, 7 round shader, 7 magnum soft edge and again 13 magnum soft edge. Everything is on 0.30 mm and I prefer to use these needles because it makes a bit less trauma to the skin and allows me to layer a bit more. So also I can blend much better the different colors and make a perfect transitions. While the 0.35 definitely pack the color much easier and this is kind of self explanatory cause the needles are thicker and they make a bigger hole and add much more pigment under the skin. But with that they damage also the skin slightly more and this makes it very difficult for me to make nice realistic looking tattoo where sometimes I need to come back and layer few tones. I use 0.35 when I am doing much more simple designs where I need to pack just a single color or maximum to blend two close to each other tones. In any other case I am using a normal 0.30mm needles which does the job as well. Now as always I start the project from the bottom and I will step by step make my way up till the end. Like this I save my stencil much longer cause I am able to wipe away from the tattoo and I also avoid whole lot of a pain for my customer during a long session like 6 to 8 hours sometimes. So what colors I will be using today? Like always I am not going to share any brands of ink here in YouTube because I don't know from where you are watching my video and what is actually available and even allowed in your country. There are a lot of rules and regulation for the inks especially here in Europe so I will try to keep it as clean as possible on this topic and not to mention any specific brand that could cause trouble on me or some of you. Meanwhile in Patreon we are a much smaller society of artists and there I am allowed to add for you the list of all the inks that I am using for each color tattoo and I am also answering each question related to this topic in depth. However, just to remind again, 
that for me all the material stuff like tattoo machine, power supply, inks, etc. are very subjective and what could work for me doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. That's also the reason why I'm always moving the focus away from the stuff in my video tutorials in YouTube. Building a strong understanding of the fundamentals is much more valuable information than just to speak about some useless tricks and tips techniques which can't be applied 90% of the times. So now for the down part of the tattoo I will be using my nice dark blue which I will adjust on the process to achieve the different values which I'm searching for. The interesting part of this tattoo is that like I mentioned already I didn't use any black in order to achieve a darker value or more contrast. The only place I was using black in the tattoo is to fill the dragonfly. I make it intentionally because I wanted to make a bit stronger focus on this part of the project because it was a very important for my client. I am actually not a big fan of using black in most of my color works, different than this case where I really wanted to make a point with it. There are a lot of theories why we can't or don't have to use black in our paintings or tattoos in order to make it look organic, but I will try to not bore you with all this analytical BS where the black is actually not a color and we never see a pure black anywhere in the nature and if we want really to make it look realistic we should mix our dark and not just use black. On the end who cares what we are seeing in the nature and what not. I mean we are creating art here and our goal is to represent our idea in the best way possible. So if this is by using black and it still looks good then feel free. Who am I to tell you not to do it anyway? The real reason why I'm actually not using black in this tattoo is that the black kills pretty much the purity of the colors especially when they are bright and warm. But then how I will even achieve the contrast and the deepness without the black? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Actually I don't think that the contrast of the color tattoos relies only on black. Even the opposite, I can make a very nice and beautiful contrast just by using complementary opposite colors or using the combination of warm and cool tones. There are many different ways to achieve contrast in a color tattoo, different than just the value contrast. We need just to learn how to understand this and apply it in our work. This is exactly what I am trying to share with you here, so if you enjoyed this video so far, please hit the like button and help the YouTube algorithm to show my video to more and more people. Anyhow, let's focus on the down part of this project where my local value will be blue. I achieve my dark tone by mixing my blue with dark brown. The dark brown will actually mute the blue and will create an amazing dark tone very close to black. I copied this technique from the old oil masters which were mixing ultramarine blue with burnt amber in order to achieve their darks. You can push it more to the blue or to the brown side of the color and this is exactly what makes this technique of tattooing so special. Because like this I am able to control my shadows in the direction that I want to and like this to bring life in my tattoos. Sometimes you can add to this mixture a little bit of concentrated green if you need for example a little bit more warm to the color. Now like I said I have a very nice saturated dark blue as my local value color which I am able to bump up or down it depends what I want to achieve. I always suggest you to use a well saturated clean colors as your main tones because you can easily mute it down or desaturate it while the opposite is much more difficult and even impossible in most cases. I mostly light up the blue with a lot of white in it, which give a very beautiful light blue. Of course if I don't need the blue to be so strong, I can add the touch of the same brown I've just used to darken it up and this will do the job. So in short, my main combination for the blue part of the mushrooms will be dark blue, which I'm going to darken with a very dark brown or if I want to light it up I will be adding white. Now for the very bright and strong almost glowing effect if you will, the case is slightly different. Here I need to use a very strong saturated colors and make them as bright as possible and as shiny as possible. So here very important is to don't use almost any white in it, 
As the black kills the purity of the colors, the white is also kind of cold color which will take all the warmth from the colors you will be mixing with it. I'm using mostly a very reddish brown color looking like a burnt sienna, mix it with a bright orange and a very nice light yellow for the lightest parts of course. This gives a very nice contrast to the tattoo and make this glowing effect. Remember, if you want your color to look nice and bright and shiny, avoid mixed up with too much white. And now we can slowly move to the face where the skin tone mixing is maybe one of the most frequent questions I get asked when we are speaking about the color tattoos. Now to be honest, the answer is very simple. The fact is, there is no such a thing as skin tone or skin color. The face is combination of many desaturated or muted colors and it depends very much on the lighting. In some cases the face could look more orangey, in other cases could be more pinky. Whatever the light source will be in this particular moment, the face will be with different skin tones. Anyhow, to express this on a tattoo is a bit more complicated than this. But there are a few principles which I follow and I will share with you today. Now if you are following me for a while, you would know that the first thing I am going to do today in the face portrait is that I will start with the shadow part of the face. This will be my darkest part of it and later on will give me nice contrast to the whole face. Remember that the shadows are always warm. Of course there are some exceptions, but in general I like to do the shadows warm and highlights cold. This gives that natural look to the face that we are used to see in the real world. Now I'm mixing my dark brown, which is again playing the role of the burnt umber, with a very dark saturated green. Up on the screen somewhere I will be showing you as an example the colors which I will be mixing. Again, try to catch the principle and don't search for the exact name of these colors. This combination for example makes an amazing deep warm color which applies perfect for the shadow parts. It's very very important that I'm not using any black or blue in the shadow part because like I said I try to keep my shadows warm and clean as possible. Using blue or black will kill all the warmth and richness in your color. Now it depends what I want to do, I can push my tone more to the red or to the green side of the color. For example, the places that are closer to the leaves of the flower, I made more greenish cause the light is reflecting in them and giving this greenish effect. And the opposite, the places under the nose and in the eye sockets, I keep much more in the red zone. Like this I keep the balance and make a very nice harmony in the piece. For me it's very important to use a lot of different color combinations, especially when I'm doing skin tones. This makes the portrait looking very rich. Using just one color and lighten it up with white or for instance darken it with black kills the portrait completely, make it look like a wax figure and this is something that I personally don't like. Now for the half tones or the light parts I follow also a few simple rules. One of the very important stuff I'm doing is that I always make the area of the cheeks and the nose a slightly more reddish or pink if you will which make the whole portrait look much more realistic. Those are also the areas of the face where we have the most blood vessels. You can remember this easily because this is exactly the areas we are getting red in the winter so representing this in the tattoo helps tremendously to the whole portrait. And for example the forehead in other hand is always a bit more into the ochre cause in the real life it is normally strongly heated from the sun and we are used to see it like this every day. Sometimes when we use a reference, for example made in a photo studio, all these small important details are not visible and that's why I can't stress enough how important it is for you to understand these principles. Stuff like this helps the realistic effect tremendously. Now the next color that I never start a portrait without is a light blue. This helps me to mute the saturation of the color if necessary and like this I am always in control of the tones I am using. It also helps me to mix some nice cold grays which I am using in some places of the face as well. Remember that I try to keep my highlights very cold. I am using almost pure white for the lightest part like for example in the tip of the nose. Most of the time I am also adding a touch of light blue which gives almost the invisible effect on the overall piece. 
Now, as always, last but definitely not least, let's have a look to the most important part of each portrait and these are the eyes. Today I decided to make them blue just to match more to the down part of the piece. See, I understand that there is a big variety of colors in this tattoo, but I did this for purpose. So I think with adding these blue eyes, I will match even more the whole picture. Remember that doesn't matter how blue you think the eyes of a person are, they are way more grey than actually blue. So keep that in mind always when you decide to put the blue straight out of the tube and make them look like they are made out of glass. I desaturated the blue with touch of brown and like this I achieved the perfect color for these eyes. Now the next very common mistake very much artists do is to do the white of the eye much lighter than it appears to be. Remember that it is never actually white, but for instance way darker than the most of the people think. And now the last thing I have to do today is the leaves with these nice red fruits going out of them. Here I kept everything way more simple because I love just how they fulfill the picture but I didn't want to grab the attention way too much on them. However, I have used here a nice dark green and just lighten it up with my ochre or with my yellow, it depends what I want to achieve. Sometimes simple stuff like this look way better than overblown tattoo full of unnecessary details in it all over the place. I really like to control my focus and in this case I try to keep it simple and play just with the color contrast. So, for the fruits, I have used a pure light red for like 80% of it. I had just in some cases mixed it with a little bit of bright yellow just to pump up a little bit the warmth or darken it up with dark green or dark brown. And that's it guys. I think that was pretty much all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed as always and if you want to see the full 3 hours real time video how I make this tattoo from the beginning to the end and also with my color picking palette next to it at the same time it will be posted in my Patreon so you can subscribe and help my channel in a massive way by supporting me there. It's just $4 for the cheapest tier and you can cancel anytime. So, if you're interested, I will let all the infos in the description with explanation how to join and also how to connect to our private Discord chat. Now, if you make it that far in the episode, I just want to thank you very much and wish you a great week or weekend. It depends when you're watching the video. Consider subscribing if you still don't really appreciate you and if you have any other questions, please let me know.